Hey everybody, I thought I'd make a quick video here to deal with a small problem that a lot of students have been having with their shopping cart. So the problem is, how do we make this updatable? Now we've already talked about making sure that this is an input form here, but how do I change the quantities, right? So it's actually not that complicated. Uh, it, it's maybe when you first look at it, you might get a little overwhelmed. So we're going to just look at some simple, we can do this with JavaScript which we're not going to do because that's a little bit more complicated. We're just going to do this with some plain old PHP here, all right? So let's head over to the code. And here's the current code for the shopping cart, right? All that we really care about is just this code right here, which is simply generating this table right here, right? So what we want to do is this line right here, the input, that is the input here that's this form and there's multiple because i have two things in my shopping cart at the moment i have the anvil and i have the bed springs so this right here again just to be clear this line here because we're in a for loop it's going to be generated a whole bunch of times the number of times of how many items are in my shopping cart which at the moment is anvil and bed spring just two things if i were to add a third thing let's go with bird seed we want one of those now do i go to my cart there are three of those right because this for loop loops through the session there and prints a form for every one of them. So let's start off here by improving our buttons here. Let's make two submit buttons and we'll call this name is equal to update. And we'll give this one a name equal to submit or we'll go with place order or something like that. Okay, and let's go ahead and give this a value that's update, update cart, or whatever, value place order. All right, now let's test it, and we go back to the cart here, and now we've got an update in the place order. But here's the tricky part. When I click update, I want the post to do something with this field right here. Well... The problem is there's we don't have a name for it, but if I give it a name, for example, name equals quantity, something like that, well, look what happens here. If I go back to the cart here and I look at my code, you'll see that I have name equals quantity. Is It's the same name for all three of these. Well, that's no good. We need each of those to have their own unique name so that I can... If I say update the input box called quantity, it's going to try to update all of them. So it's going to get confused because you can't have them all have the same name. So we need to give them separate names somehow before we can do anything. So let's figure that out. One simple thing we can do, and this is a solution we're going to use, is just tack on to here the, the um, counter in our loop here, right? So I can just simply say dash and we're going to concatenate on x. So now the name will be quantity 0, quantity 1, quantity 2, and so forth, right? So if I go back here, close that, go back to the cart, look at our code, and now you can see that, not quite, I missed something in my <laughs> concatenation. I need to leave that quote and close it here. There we go. All right, now let's try it. Cart, look at the code, and now you can see, okay, the name of this one is called quantity zero, this one's called quantity one, this one's called quantity two. Now we can do something with that, right? Pretty straightforward. So before we forget, let's go ahead and make sure that we give this method um, that it's post. The action we can leave blank because the default behavior is it'll just go and reload the same page that we're on. Now at the very beginning of our page here, we can just check to see if this update button has been pushed by checking the post and seeing if it's been set. So we can just do a simple if is set, I'll give you a little bit more there. If is set the post and it was called update. If that's set, then we know that they actually pushed the button, 
And for the moment, let's just put, you know, echo, hello, you updated. Let's just start there. Okay, if we come back over here, start the card over. And now if I push update, hello, you updated. So our it's catching our post, right? All right, well, what do we need to do to make this work? We, we don't even need to change what's here, right? I'm going to put a two here or something or a three there, whatever, four here, and I'm going to click update. I don't have to worry about when I click the post here, notice how it changes back to a one. Why does it change back to a one? Because that's what's in the session. Every time I go to this page, it puts in here whatever's in the session variable. So if I just change the session variable to what's in there at the moment when the post runs, then when the cart page reloads, it'll grab that from the session variable, right? So if I just loop through the session variable and set each of the quantity dash whatevers to whatever is currently in the field when the button was pushed that will update our session variables and thus because we're back or on the cart page which specifically looks at the session variables to put the values in the field everything should work just fine so let's start with that we'll just loop through So here we're just looping through the session quantity, or however many times, how, however many elements are in the quantity, right? How many things are in that array, this, this, this array right here, how many things are in it? We're going to loop through that many times. And then what do we need to do after that? We simply just need to set the session for the quantity session variable, the exit element equal to whatever is in the post at the moment, right? So post, and then what do we want? We want to get the quantity zero, right? Which we're going to change this to be more dynamic in a second. But the idea is the zeroth element in the quantity array is going to be set to the zeroth element from the post. And then the first element in the quantity array it's going to be set to the first element in the post and so forth, right? So this is easy. We just put the X in there. That's our counter. But how do we do this? We're just going to make a little variable that deals with the concatenation here, right? So we're just going to make one that's called post ID or something like that. And every time we loop through, we're going to set it equal to quantity dash the X, right? We're just going to concatenate that on right there. So each time through the loop, this will change, right? The first time through the loop, this will be Post ID will equal quantity dash zero, then quantity dash one, and so on throughout as we loop. And we just put that guy right there. And so now all we're saying is if the po if the update button was pushed, loop the number of times of values in the quantity session variable, right? The, that's an array. And then we're going to set this post ID, which is going to change from quantity dash zero, quantity dash one, quantity dash two, and however many times, and then set the session variable at that spot equal to that value at that spot that's in the post. And remember, the way this cart works, when it loads this form down here, it loads from what's in the session variable at the moment. Well, when we run this post, we've changed what's in the session variable at the moment. So let's test it out. Let's go ahead and click on cart, and let's say update that to four, click update, and sure enough, it stays. And of course, the math worked out as well, because that's all just part of what happens down here. So all we had to do is change the session variables, change this to 10 of those, 12 of those, 41 of those, click update, and poof, everything works just fine. So that's it. Hopefully that helps clarify how to deal with the updating of the cart. One last tip I want to give you, which is very important, which is dealing with the session start. You're going to find that some of you may have the situation where it works fine on your local machine, but when you upload it to your server, it doesn't quite work. So I'm going to open up all my files here and show you what I'm talking about here. So right now I have in this database file the session start. Let me go open that up real quick. That's in here. Session start. This is fine because it's at the very top, and when I call it here, it's at the very top. However, if I have even a comment here, start the session or something like that 
Yeah, it'll work locally on your Champ server, but it will not work when you upload it to your live server. So if you have any comments before this, get rid of them. And in fact, if it still doesn't work after you've gotten rid of the comments, you may want to consider getting rid of that space right there too. It's very, very finicky. The other thing is if you have something before here, like maybe you have an HTML style comment. This is a comment, right? Right, if you have an HTML style comment, this is occurring before the session start. So get rid of anything like that and the space here. Make sure there's no space there. Make sure that other than the opening tag, obviously, that the only thing, the immediate thing after it is the session start. Make sure that's the case on every one of your pages. That can make a huge difference when you go live because you guys are going to have this thing working fabulously on your local machine and it's going to be great and you think you're done. Then you're going to upload it and it doesn't work. And that would be unfortunate if you didn't know that it didn't work. So make sure you test it when you go live, but you want to give yourself enough time to be able to fix these little tweaky little bugs there. So hopefully that helps. Thanks for watching, guys.